So it spends a little bit of time, like I mentioned before. We're just going to move these points around. We can use the tweak um, tool if we wanted to, which is the T key, but it's just as easy sometimes just to grab the handle. So now I've spent a bit of time actually getting this right, I'm just going to select the thumb area now, ready to extrude it. We're using the fast extrude with the control key and just dragging out the handle. You can see by spending a little bit of time to get the actual foundations correct that any extrusion comes out the way it should. So I'm just going to spend some time just rotating it, moving it about so I'm happy with the actual form and shape. Now we've extruded the thumb and again we need to spend a bit of time making sure that we're happy with what we've extruded. It's worth spending a bit of time on your actual creation because you can use this hand again and again. So you know why not just spend a little bit more extra time, be happy with the results. So the, every extrusion that you see me do, I'm always using the fast extrude, the control key held down while dragging out. Now I'm rotating the thumb area because I want the thumbnail to be facing the right direction. If you see the reference image you can see that it's facing slightly away from the rest of the fingers. So you need to spend a little bit of time to do this. Again, I'm going to be tweaking some vert. This time I'm using the tweak tool, the T key. And I just want to get this just right. And this is where I'm going to be forming the thumb nail from. It can take a little while to get used to doing this, working in full 3D space in the perspective view, but you will get used to it after a while. You have to be aware of what direction and angle you're working in and, and um, be familiar with your 3D environment. Now the thumb's probably a little bit too short, so I might just um, extend that a little bit longer. We just validate. And keep on working on this for a little while. So I'm going to select two polygons next to each other and then press L for loop to loop around the whole selection and then I'm just going to pull it forward. making sure that I rotate it in the right places as I do so. A little bit crooked there, so I'm going to loop select around that again and just rotate that back. Oh, I can see a, a vert there just off there, so I'm going to move this vertice just back in there. If you see something, correct it right away. Don't think I'll do that later because the chances are you'll probably forget. So it's not worth doing that. So we're going to select this nail area and we're going to be creating the nail by extruding inward just like we did before. Pushing in, then extrude out. Then we bring this nail forwards. And note that my coordinate system is actually set to selection so the handles are always facing the direction in which I'm working or which the polygons are selected so with smooth on we can see that that's fine just having a general look around with it now Now with this selected, what I'm going to decide to do now is create a duplicate. So Control and C, then Control and V. And I'm going to apply a level of one of smoothness, and then I'm going to apply it permanently. And you can see I'm doing this by clicking on this lightning bolt in the bottom right here, in the dynamic geometry. So effectively I'm creating a higher polygon version and a lower polygon version.
Now I'm going to use the smooth tool filmed in the UV and paint area just to smooth out some of the edges. And the reason why I'm making two versions in this particular case is because I can load in the lower polygon version into ZBrush and subdivide it once and then import my higher polygon version and it will automatically bridge the um, the two versions together in ZBrush. Of course I can do all of this in ZBrush itself but I just wanted to show you that um, these sculpting tools within Hexacon do have some uses even for somebody that's got a program like ZBrush and that they are very handy especially the smooth brush. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial and I hope you enjoyed it and learnt something from it and um, good luck with yours you know you spend a bit more time it should turn out even better than this one thanks for watching